Pastor Mike Porter. Um, we've been doing a series, teaching in a series, which we do a lot here, uh, just for, for a number of reasons. Number one, a lot of the topics are too exhausting to cover and try to cram into one Sunday. And then one of the reasons I, I tend to teach in series is the national average is that the, the average person attends two out of every four Sundays. And so when you teach in series, everybody gets the message. If you change every week, sometimes people don't know, don't get the flavor of what the Spirit is saying. And so we try to teach in series so that everybody can get what the Spirit is saying at that particular moment. And so we, we recently started, well, I won't say recently, a month or so ago, started a series we called Six Steps to the Throne. And um, uh, we just began by using Solomon's Temple. I won't go back there. But just to show you, I'm going to do a couple of illustrations today. Just to kind of show you the principle, uh, we had steps ascending, which represented our life. Six, but in every step, there's two parts. There's the step itself right here. Oh, excuse me, that's the riser, and this is the step. I'm sorry. So what you do is you rise up higher, and then you walk out what you know. And when you walk out what you know, guess what? You rise up higher and you walk that out. And you rise up higher and you walk that out. And you keep rising and you keep walking and you keep ascending. And so we started and the first three steps were about something that happened to us in the past without going over the whole thing. But what we said in the first three steps was when Christ was crucified, you were crucified with him. When he was buried, you were buried with him. When he died, you died. And so those things that happened to him happened to your old man, your old nature. And he put to death your nature that you inherited from your father, Adam. Now, I know you have a natural earthly father, but you have a spiritual father that every person who's born, including the little babies who are here, they inherit their father, Adam's nature at birth. And this is why the Bible <coughs> can call us all sinners, lump us into one thing. Even though the baby hasn't committed any crime, right? Any sin, right? The newborn baby is born with a sin nature that it inherited from Adam because God put every man in Adam. When Adam failed, God put every man in Adam. So it was in God's heart to restore all of mankind. So he sent a second Adam, Jesus, who we're talking about. And that Adam undid all the work that the first Adam did. And not just undid it, but over undid it. If you can do that, that's not proper English, but you get my point, right? He over superseded what Adam did. Christ more than wiped away. He gloriously did away with it. Amen? And so in our journey, uh, we are on the fourth step, or maybe this is the fifth step. This is the fifth step. We've come up those steps. The last one was we were what? Quickened with Christ. When God made him alive, he made us alive. And so now the next step that we're going to take two Sundays to talk about is raised. You were, you, you were crucified with him. You died with him. You were buried with him. You were quickened with him. And then you were raised with him. And the principle I want you to get today is when Jesus came out of the tomb, it was not the same Jesus that went into the tomb. A new kind of creation came out of that tomb that had never lived before. And he was the firstborn among many brethren. In other words, he was the first to step out into this new creation realm that the Bible is talking about us in. And so just to give you an example, you don't and I don't, we don't really even associate with the Jesus you see in the Gospels. Right? We learn from it. It's lessons for us. But that's not the Jesus that we're tied to. The Jesus that you see portrayed in the movies most of the time. The Jesus who's healing. The Jesus who's teaching. The Jesus we're tied to is the Jesus that came out of the tomb on the third day. The resurrected Lord is who we're tied to. Amen? The one who came out without any sin. Right? Everything stayed dead behind him and now only life exists in Jesus. All right? And so I'm going to do some things. i got some things on my paper today. I'm going to do a little different. Colossians 3, 1 through 4 says, If you then were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. So everybody, everybody has two parts. They got an inner man. I'll move out of the way and let you see this. And 
then they got an outer man. Okay? You got an inner man and an outer man. When you accept Christ as Savior, this man inside comes alive. This is the eternal part of you. This is the forever saved part of you. This is the part of you that's in God and can't be taken out of God. This is, the, this is the spirit man inside of you. But that spirit man is clothed or wrapped in an outer man. So I've got an inner man and I've got an outer man. And so do you. When I say man, I mean men and women, right? There's no gender in the spirit, okay? So this is how, this is how you can be walking on air, I'll put it that way, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon and at 3 o'clock fall flat on your face because there are two parts to you, right? And this is why the Apostle Paul said, from now on, from now on, I'll judge no man according to this right here, the outer part. I'm going to look at man by the inner part, the spirit part of him. And so that's where the church has to develop patience with people because the outer part is not saved, but the inner part is. But here's what's happening. Here's what's happening. This realm right here is expanding outward. And as the realm of the spirit expands outward, it's going to change your external man. The Bible says what? We will all be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And I know I was raised and grew up in cultures where we all just sit around waiting on the boom to happen, you know, so we can change. But I'm here to tell you, I believe in my life and in the lives of a lot of people I know, I believe I'm already hearing a trumpet calling for change. And I believe what's happening is the spirit part of us is working its way out to the outside of us. And that's where we feel. That's what we feel is happening. And there's going to come a day when it's going to be like this. This will be the inner and the outer is going to consume the inner. And when it does, your natural body will become an eternal body. Jesus came out of the tomb, but he left the old man dead in the grave. And he came out what? A spirit being. But he had a body. You can still see the holes in his hands, the piercing in his side, but yet he could eat fish on the seashore and walk through the door at the same time. Hallelujah. Yeah, he freaked them out. Uh, it says it nice in the Bible. It says he walked through the door. The door was shut, by the way. And he said, peace be still. But what actually happened was he walked through the door and it freaked them out. He said, hey, y'all, come down as me. I mean, wouldn't it? Right through the wall. So he's got a body. He's eating food. But he's supernatural. What happened? The old man just died. Everything that Adam did died. And only Christ came out of that tomb. And in your life and in mine, that's the process we're going through. That's what's happening with us. That's the groaning. That's the feeling. Sometimes that's even the frustration feeling. That's what's happening. The spirit man is hearing the sound of the spirit saying what? Come up higher. Come up higher. Come on. And the spirit is, what's, is pushing them. It's pushing on the inside. It's trying. It's working its way. The realm of the spirit is enlarging. And when it does, it starts consuming the fleshly realm. If this spirit, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, dwell in you, he shall quicken. He's going to expand and what? Quicken your mortal body. Your physical body is going to come under the realm, the influence of the spirit man. Yes. Glory. Boy, what a day that will yes. be. Amen. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so it says, if, you, if those things are happening to you, here's what you do. You set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Now here's what it's saying. This, this outer man is of the earth, right? He's in the earth realm. He's down here in the dust. That's where he got made from, right? Mm -hmm. Made man out of dust. This spirit man lives up here, seated with Christ at the top on the throne. And so what the writer is saying is, who's in charge of which direction you're headed? Whether you're going by things of the earth or whether you're going by things of the spirit, guess who? Your mind, your will and your emotions, your soulish realm 
is directing you, you choose which way you go with the help of the Spirit, with the help of the Father. Everything's about Father. Father has empowered us to make the right choices. Amen? And so what I do is, when I choose spiritual things, the realm of the Spirit enlarges in my life. And then I'm not always working on something that's never going to live anyway. I grew up in church cultures and all we tried to do was modify people's flesh by getting them to behave one way or the other. But it only expanded the realm of flesh. And that's the realm we want to, John said, I must decrease. So he can Let's see. Let's try to straighten us out now. Let's see. We all gonna have to dress this way. We all gonna have to look this way. We all gonna have to act this way. Uh, I'm not putting anybody down. I'm not. You're my heart. But you see what I'm saying? Why are we? Where was our mindset in that? On the earth realm, the flesh realm, right? Which is not saved. And newsflash, ain't gonna never be saved. Amen. Sorry. Your flesh is not going to ever be saved. But your spirit's eternally saved. It's secure in Jesus. So in you is the spirit man, the person of Jesus, in the Holy Ghost, who's pressing, who's pushing, who's expanding. And there's going to come a day when human beings on planet Earth reach the expansion point to where whoa, the spirit takes over in the natural realm. And people will have natural bodies but do supernatural things. Just like Jesus did. Right? Amen? For you died, well, we don't preach that three times. You died, you, he died, you died. He was buried, you were buried. Right? And your life is now hidden with Christ or in Christ, with Christ in God. That's where your real life is. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Now, once again, I'm going to talk about my upbringing a little bit. And I'm not putting my upbringing down because some of the folks may be watching what I'm saying here. <laughs> and uh, I'm not putting them down. But here's how I grew up. One day, someday, somewhere in the sweet by and by, something's going to make a sound, something's going to happen, and I'm going to be swoosh, took, taken out of here, let go of this earthly body, and take on a supernatural body. And now I'm not trying to take that away from anybody. That's not what I'm trying to do. But I want you to see that Christ is already in your life. Where is he? He's in the center. Right? And what is that center doing? Expanding. Through revelation, through teaching, through prayer, through relationship with Jesus, with the Father, Jesus is expanding. And I don't know when it will break through the realm of the flesh. But let me tell you. When Christ, who is your life, look, appears out here. Then you'll also appear with him in glory. Look here. Christ, who is your life, is going to keep expanding. Until one day, Danielle. Christ is going to expand out past the realm of the flesh. And when he does, you will become a glorious creation yes. that you already are. Yes. You'll be like Adam. You'll wear the glory of God. Yes. Will you still have a suit on? Yes, you will. Right? But it will be glorious the way Jesus' body was glorious. Amen? Amen. Even in the Gospels, Jesus in natural form had the ability to disappear to you remember? Crowds would get around him. He would what? Somehow magically slip away. He just disappeared, reappeared. And I know that might sound crazy to a lot of people. But the fact of the matter is, if Jesus did it, then Jesus' brothers can do it too. Amen? Amen. That's the day we're headed toward. That's, the, that's the, um, the place of discovery. That's the place of actualization. That's the place where the mind goes, whoo, and wakes up. To the fact that we're this person really and not this person at all. Yeah. <laughs> what are most of our conversations about? This yeah. fellow right here. Yeah. yeah. Did you see? Did you hear what they did? Did you see what they did? Read the newspapers all about the church. Yeah. Who did what to who and how long they did it to them. 
right? It's all about temporary things, right? I'm not putting down the newspaper. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just saying. Most of life, most of our thought is where? I think, I feel, I want, da, da, da. What do you think? How do you feel? What's your opinion? Right? But where, are we, where are we drawing it all from? This right here? Well, you can do that and be saved. Christ is still in you, the hope of glory. But I'm going to tell you what, it suppresses the, the expansion of the Spirit in your life. Here's what the Bible is saying. This is earth. You live here. Your body is here. But your mind can be set up here. Where Christ is seated with the Father in heavenly places. And when you set your mind here, you bring down what is in the heavenlies to the earth realm. That's what you do. You bring down what is in the heavenlies to the earth realm. And what is in the heavenlies? Everything is in the heavenlies. Right? This is how you bring down the heart of God to people. This is how people are one. Peter stands up in the book of Acts and preaches the gospel out of a mind that's set on heavenly things. And 3,000 people go, yes, I believe in Jesus. He ain't talking about sin, what you do, what you don't do. Well, come on. He just told them who Christ was. And the mindset of heaven pricked the heart of people. And what happened? They woke up to the person of Jesus. Amen? Amen? So here's what I want you to see. You did not come alive in here on the day you were saved. You came alive on the day that Christ came alive. Amen. But you had actualization. It came real to you when you put your faith in the message of the gospel. Amen. And now that man right there, he's knocking on the door. He wants to get out. Anybody feel that going on in their life? Yeah. Sometimes this man out here is frustrating this man, but I'm going to tell you what, this man right here is going to win in the end. Amen. This man's going to win in the end. Amen? Amen. Amen. This man's going to win in the end. So, when Christ appears, I, I'm not going to, I just believe for me, I'll say it for me, I believe I ain't got to wait till someday when I get to heaven for Christ to appear. I believe Christ is in me, the hope of glory, according to the scripture. And as the spirit man expands, Christ will appear in my life. I will decrease, he will increase until the point of the manifestations of the sons of God who will really be Jesus walking the earth. Instead of one, it will be multiple millions or hundreds of millions of Jesus. What in the world do you think will happen on planet earth when that happens? If one Jesus is raising the dead and healing the sick and casting out demons, good God, what would a hundred million you know how this world's going to be changed? The sons of God will change it. Amen. Not through their own power, but through the power of Christ who will take over. Here's what God's doing. God's taking over everything. Everything consumed in Christ. Amen? Amen. So if you got a problem, you got a situation, you got an addiction, you got an issue, everybody's got them, right? Everybody's got them. We got no big heads in here. We ain't none of us arrived yet. Just know this: while you're struggling, while you have an issue, you keep telling your issue this: you're going to be consumed in Christ. Yes. Yes. Oh, we might be having it out right now. We might be duking it out today. But I'm telling you what: there's going to be a day you fall in that mat, and that's going to be it. Amen. 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 And why not today? Right? And we're not going to beat it by fighting it. We're going to beat it by waking up to who we are in Jesus. Because really, really, there's no struggles for us anymore. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Let me move on for time's sake here. Ephesians 1, 19 through 20 says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? Look where his power directs. Toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. So where is the power of God flowing now? To the believer. Flowing through and out of and to the believer, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. When God raised Christ from the dead, power extended to the body of Christ. Whatever the head got, the body got at the same time. And you are the body of Christ. So whatever God did to Christ, God has done to you. If he seated him right at his right hand, then you were seated at his right hand in heavenly places. And one day, Sister Debbie, we're going to wake up to that fact and we're going to live life in the earth as if we're in the heavens. When we set our minds 
say, I, I'm not going to take you out of here. God's not trying to get us out of earth. He's getting heaven to yeah. earth. Mm -hmm. That's what he's doing. And how's he going to get heaven to earth? With people he set by us. All right? Can you say amen to that? Amen. Far above all principality, power, might, dominion, and every name is named, not only in this age. See, here's how we grew up. We wanted everything to be in the sweet by and by. When we meet on that beautiful shore. You know why we wanted it that way? Because that means I ain't got to do nothing. <laughs> Everybody pull up a chair. Poor old sinners going to hell for me. I'm going to heaven. I don't know how they did in y'all's churches, but anybody feel me? See what I'm saying? I, I grew up like that. And my, my, my mind was set on, get me out of here. Get me out of this stinking place so I can be with Jesus. And the whole time, I was with Jesus. And Jesus was with me. And all them years, I was trying to get out of here. Daddy was waiting on me to wake up to the fact that he wanted me to get what was there. Here where I am. Changes the way I see the world all together. Now I'm not falling apart like the world's falling apart. Why? Because in my spirit, man, I know heaven is on earth. And heaven came to earth in the person of Jesus. And now I'm not looking for streets of gold. I found my heaven. You can wait on them if you want to. But I've seen something more beautiful than mansions and greater than streets of gold. His name is Jesus. And he lives right there in you. All them promises God made to the fathers, He fulfilled it in Jesus. Yes. Yes. I'll just put it to you this way. You've already got God's very greatest. Yes. Yes. Now we're not waiting on Father to do anything else. He's sitting down. Jesus is sitting down. And the body is moving to become like Christ. Yes. Yes. Look at what Daddy did. Daddy said, okay, we had a fall. Man messed it up. I'm going to send a man. And I'm going to let a man fix what a man did. Mm -hmm. But this man is going to be my son, the last act. Mm -hmm. And he's going to fix it so good that everybody who believes in him comes alive in him yeah. on the inside. Mm -hmm. And so that God would get all the glory forever, yeah. that seed that's in you of promise is going to overwhelm and overtake. Don't you think for a moment evil's going to win anything. Father will consume everything in himself and there'll be a day when you'll see it with your own eyes. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm not worried about enemies today. I don't say there aren't any. I just say I'm not worried about them. Amen? It's in this age right now and I'm telling you there's an age to come. I agree with you. But it's in this age too. Bro, Tony, I don't have to wait for way over there. I can, it's in this age. When is Christ Lord? Now. When is He King? Now. Now is the day. Now is the time. Hallelujah. So, let me say some things here to you. I wrote in my notes and not on there. Jesus intends for the believer to relate to the world from the perspective of the throne. This is why the church has gone through so many ways to try to reach the world and none of them have basically worked. We've knocked on doors. We've had parties. We've had block parties. We've had, and some people got saved. And I'm not putting you down if you did that. I've done some of that. But the masses have not been won. Like we see them won in the book of Acts. Where people are coming in droves. Here's why. What we wanted to manifest was us. Our church. Our movement. Our group. That was our mindset. We wanted to make them Baptists and Presbyterian and Pentecostals. That's what we wanted to do. When the day that we wake up and present the Messiah to them in power and in glory because we possess it, that's the day without effort people will say, tell me more about this man. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. You don't think the apostles got people running around after them? Come on, get up off your bed and walk. 
You ain't got to put a sign up for a church. People will find you yeah. when you manifest those yeah. things. Yeah. They'll track you down. You don't even need a phone number. They'll come pitch a tent and wait on you to have a service. I'm serious. I went to Mexico on a missionary trip one time, and it blew my mind how people, the extent people went to to get to church to hear about Jesus. It blew my mind. They would let out school in the middle of the day, let out school to come to church because missionaries had come into the area. And hundreds of kids had come running to go this way. I saw women nursing babies who had walked for miles to get to a church to hear about Jesus. Amazing, amazing. And so in America, we try to form some kind of a program, some kind of philosophy, some kind of thinking, but where is it all coming from? Spiritual. Spiritual. You know what I need to do and you need to do? I need to ascend and get my mind set on heavenly things and bring those heavenly things down to this room. And when people see these heavenly things, you can't say no to them. You can't say no to them. Amen? Amen. All right. So <clears throat> the, the sp there's kind of like a spell. The spell of the world is broken when the believer rises from out of the power of the resurrection of Jesus. So what the resurrection did was it gets me the ability to operate not in this realm, but in this realm. So that while I'm at work, while I'm driving in my car, while I'm doing everyday, natural, mundane things, I can still be set in heavenly places. This is where I'm supposed to live, right here. My feet are on terra firma, but my mind is up in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. And that mind is telling my feet where to go. And that's how you're led by the Spirit, because it's where you set your mind. That's where you go going. If you don't believe it, I could go set my mind on something foolish to do right now. And if I keep my mind set on something foolish to do long enough, I will go do the foolish thing. But if I set my mind on heavenly things, I'll go do the heavenly thing. Amen. So, <laughs> Ephesians 2, 5 through 6. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you've been saved, and raised us up, he raised us up and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So this spirit man that's in you is seated where? In the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. But he lives in a man with a body, an earth suit. But the spirit man is going to keep communicating with heaven long enough till it affects this natural earthly man, so that this earthly man will be conformed to the image of Christ and do the things that Christ does. Amen. 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 That's where we're going. Come on, tell two or three people. That's where we're going. 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 You can go two ways. You can go. You can go with let's go, or you can go with I don't want to really want to go, but that spirit's going to keep. You know who the frustrated person is? The Bible says the double-minded person. Yeah. The person who's spiritual but trying to live earthly. That's the frustrated point out of just wear you down, right? Yeah. That's why religion wears you down. Yes. You're spiritual, but it tries to get you to think out of natural things. Yeah. You know? But the spirit, what? Sets you free. Yeah. And releases you to what? Liberty. Yeah. And in liberty, there's what? Rest. Rest. How's it going to happen? Don't know. God's going to do it. Just, Abraham, let's get up and go. Okay, let's go, God. Where are we going? Don't know. Let's go that way. Okay, let's go. When's the last time you did anything like that? You know what's happened to us, even as believers? This realm has affected our minds so much that it makes it difficult to hear this realm. When this realm is talking all the time, Life is in the power of the Father, what the Father has spoken. Yeah. You know, the Bible says life and death is in the power of your tongue. Well, it just simply means where's the source of the words you're speaking. Yeah. If they're down here in the earth realm, there ain't no life in them. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe it will. Possibly it could. I'm not sure. All that's earthly. <coughs> yeah. Heavenly thinking says what? His promises are what? Yes and amen. Yeah. I don't know how 
But I'm confident in the fact that my Father will has consumed everything. Mm -hmm. And that even the bad thing will yield to the will of God. Mm -hmm. Because actually, can I say this to you? Even the bad things, everything that is has come out of the person of the Father. It may have been warped in some sense, but God will bring it all back in in his wonderful, precious love. Amen? Mm -hmm. Everything will be consumed in God, has been consumed, but it will actually be consumed here in the earth. Can you see? Am I making any sense? Okay. So the believer who's living the enthroned life and the mindset of fear, though they may be doing everyday things, average things, what they do is they breathe in the atmosphere of heaven. They keep breathing in heaven. They keep breathing in life. And this is how, you know how you run into some people, let's say at Walmart, and you almost hate to run into them because what do they do? I, I call them vampires. They, they like suck life out of them. It's hard. And you walk away feeling like, man, I need what's one of them power drinks? Energy drink. Yeah, energy drink. And then you see some people, you're just like, woo, come here. Hug their neck and you, just, you walk away feeling what? Alive. They just, they just give, exude life. That's the only difference is just where minds are set. That's it. And if you really want to test mindsets, do this right here. Go get in the medicine line at the pharmacy. And you'll be able to tell where everybody's at by their conversation. Because I'll just be honest with you. I take medicine. I'm not putting anybody down who does. But my confidence is not in my medicine. I fight it. Every time I take it, I have a conversation with it. And I tell it, we're going to part ways. This is, this is not a relationship I want to be a part of. I'm reluctant in this relationship. You see my point of view? And so I know we, we're not all here all the time, but I'm telling you that we can live in a place where everything is heavenly set. And then you have the confidence of what? You can never make a mistake from here. You can never fail from here. You can never fall from here. Watch this. You won't ever sin from here. Yes. Not when your mind is set on things above. Amen? Amen. 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 Just a couple more minutes here. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Let me skip past that. <clears throat> so what I'm trying to get across to you here, a lot about today, just prefacing this raise, is I'm trying to get across to you about consciousness, your mind how you think about things and where you get your thoughts from. Yeah. And you say, well, how do I set my mind on heavenly things? Well, the Word of God is a great place to start. Mm -hmm. It will teach you to trust in the heavenly places and hear the voice of the Spirit out of the heavenly places. Look at books in the Bible, even like Revelation. What? What did Jesus say all the time? Let him who has an ear hear what the Spirit is saying. Where's the Spirit talking from? He's talking from heavenly places, but where does He live? In you. So the heavenlies are in you. Christ is enthroned on your heart. This thing is not a million miles away from you is what I want you to see. This thing is right here in you, within your grasp. It's not impossible to live out of heaven. It's very possible. It already exists in your life. Amen? I mean, I just want to encourage you. I grew up thinking it was just next to impossible to do anything like that. So, uh, the garden principle. God made man in his own image, Adam. And Adam walked planet earth covered in the glory of God. Adam fell and lost that image before he had a chance to reproduce it. And so, man, earth went through thousands of years with a fallen picture of their father a warped picture of things and developed a terrible mindset about things. And if you don't believe it, just read in the account of the flood with Noah. The whole world had gone crazy. The mindset of the world was wicked. And so the mindset, the way you think will determine how you operate and function in your life, in your family's lives, in your workplace and things that once got you upset, got you down, got you shook, won't be able to shake you anymore because you won't be living out of their realm. You'll be living out of the heavenly realm. And what will it do? It will let them see. What would happen to our co-workers, our family, our friends, if they could see us living out of the heavenly realm? I guarantee you they want to be a part of that. What do you have and where did you get it from? Will be my 
one question. Amen? Amen. Come on, stand to your feet with me. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, in the Old Covenant, a lamb died and got him out of Egypt. They took the door of the lamb and, you know, put it over the doorpost and went there. And that dead lamb got them out of 430 years of bondage. And they, they cross over a Jordan River to get to a promised land. And God holds them up just before they go in for three days. And a lamb, they take the ark of God, Jesus. And they carry Jesus first into the Jordan. And they stand there with Jesus in the river. So I want you to see is the same lamb that got you out of Egypt that got you saved from sin that was our Egypt it's a picture of sin and bondage the same lamb that got you out of Egypt gets Egypt out of you without effort without trying without working for it without sweating over it that lamb is living in you and the more you eat the meal of that lamb more that lamb gets Egypt out of you. What's happening? God is working from what? The inside out. So get a picture of your father, not somewhere far away, like you got to pray and hopefully it'll go ascend through the heavenlies and reach the throne of God. No. See your, you're in your father in Christ. It is instant. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Where is it? It's right here. The realm of the spirit is right here. It's not out here for me to get and pull into me, Brother William. The realm of the spirit is in the life of the believer. And that life is meant to live and exude and influence and take over and have dominion in this realm right here. I don't know what day it will be, but someday, somebody is going to move into this room. Yes. And even the earth is going to say, I saw this one time before. Could it be? Could it be in here? <clears throat> and then others, and then others, and then others. I'm not going to try to mess up any of your belief, but I'm here to tell you, I know in my spirit, at some point in time, Someone is going to have that spirit realm move out and influence this realm. Yes. And when they do, that son of God will manifest on earth. Yes. And when they speak, they will have the authority of the heavens yes. in their voice. Mm -hmm. And everything will have to listen to that. Even the earth. The earth was created where? Out of the Father's voice. Do you know what will cause this earth to be alive again? It's going to hear the Father's voice in the sons of God again. And even this earth is going to come alive. Those people who don't know Jesus, they're going to hear the voice of God come out of the mouth of a son of God again, like it did with Peter. And when it does, they're going to say, yes, I believe in this Jesus. And their heart's going to awaken to the fact that Christ has saved them from their sin. That's what everybody's waiting for. The voice of God in the Son of God again. And I'm looking at sons of God in this room, which the voice of God lives in you. And I'm telling you, you have that kind of authority and dominion. If you set your mind, Brother Pee Wee, on heavenly things, I'm telling you, heavenly things will pull down to you and you'll speak life to this dead planet and life to unrepentant people and life to your family and health to your children and they will be shaken at the sound of your voice. So close is it to me when I get up every morning and I go, Father, is it today? Is it today? And I'm not so sure it's a certain day picked out. I believe it's the day that I choose. I believe it's the day when I finally get out of this earthly prison. One of the great
greatest battles in here anywhere is getting past myself. I am of no importance. But Christ is all in all. And if I can present Christ to people, they will fall in love with him. And not me. Oh, that no one ever fall in love with me because I will certainly let them down. But my, my Jesus, he never lets you down. Amen. Amen. He's forever. Always love. He always knows what to say, when to say it, and how to say it. You think for a moment, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that's all that Jesus did? Do you know the writer said, I suppose if we would have recorded everything that Jesus did, there's not enough books in the whole world to tell you everything he did. You just learned enough that you can have fun. Do you think them few folks that got raised from the dead in that book are the only people he raised from the dead? Uh -huh. I doubt it very seriously. Do you think them few people you heard about getting healed in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the only people who got healed? I doubt it very seriously. Turned the world upside down, made everybody mad that was religious, right? To the point they actually wanted to kill him. They tried to kill him several times, but he couldn't die before it was time for him to die. And I just want to make that proclamation over you. You can't go either. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not planning on any departures. You know what? I'm planning on a manifestation to happen in my life. I'm not trying to go somewhere. I'm trying to be somewhere. And the somewhere I'm trying to be is set in the heavenly places. That's where I'm working toward through the power of Christ in me. I'm not trying to get out of here. I'm trying to get heaven into here. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on Earth, as it is in heaven. Wasn't it selfish of us to want to get out of here? <laughs> Lord, we can't come down here and get me to a better place. <laughs> I can't have this mess. And God said, if you knew who you were. What was that line of that song we sang? You are my identity. If you knew, if we knew who we were, Watch out, Brother Tony. Watch out. Amen. We'd no longer be people who cut down trees and clean floors and carpets. We'd be sons of God who cut down trees. Right? So come on, let's just make a declaration. Put your hand on your stomach here. Just a place of center here. The Holy Spirit is in you. Say this with me. I am the Son of God. Because of, Jesus. because of Jesus, I have, I have everything, everything that Christ has. That Christ has. I, possess I possess the kingdom. The kingdom. Jesus, Jesus gave me the keys. Me the keys. I, have I have the life, the life of, Christ. of Christ, the same life. The same life. I, am I am a new creation, a new creation. the same creation, the same that, creation. Jesus that Jesus was when he came out of that tomb. I'm part of that race. The new creation race. Hallelujah. When Christ came out of that tomb, he initiated a new race of people. And it wasn't based on color or culture or gender. It was based on blood. Covenant. And he came out of that tomb and said, I'm the firstborn among many brethren. And now God has made you the brother of Jesus by the power of raising Christ from the dead and extending his great power toward you. You are enthroned. You are set above, far above every power and dominion and might because of Christ. That life is working its way out of you. And I'm glad to see it. I need to quit. I need to quit. Jesus, thank you. We love you. Thank you for loving us and for loving these great people of yours here. Hallelujah. We give you praise and honor. We give you glory. We give you everything, Lord. You deserve it, not us. And we're thankful. We're thankful. We're grateful. Thank you for your glorious love.
Thank you for your glorious love. Thank you. And Father, may the peace of God that passes all understanding comfort our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And may we have an ear that is open to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And eyes to see. Let us come up higher out of this realm and have our minds set on heavenly things. In the name of Christ our Savior.